Good morning. Good morning. We are going to have a three hours lecture again, and uh, we are going to cover flat dynamics today. Um, Monday, we covered aerodynamics. Do you feel and uh, you have some basic understanding about uh, aerodynamics? So those aerodynamics properties are inherent to the flying objects. So, but when the flat objects in the air and how it will be changing along its pose, attitude, and so on and so forth, it will be governed by a set of differential equations. Okay? So what you are going to see is a very scary slide. It's called EOM, equation of motion. So I do not expect you to derive these equations, but I want you to be able to appreciate it, understand the structure of it, and those parameters inside. So you can see this is a set of first order differential equations of vector form, vector form. So you can see you have a dot, 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 u, v, w, Psi theta, uh, phi theta psi, and p k r. So, how many of these? Can you count? Thirteen. What? We know twelve. Twelve. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> twelve. Spacing makes it difficult. Yes. Uh, so, can anybody tell me uh, wh uh, what's the the space we are living is? Uh, 3D, 2D, or 1D space? 3D, right? We are living in a 3D space. And you heard about the rigid body must have six degree of freedom, right? So, degree of freedoms. So, three dimensional space, six degree of freedom, and 12 differential equations, these numbers are related, right? Related. So because of three-dimensional space, you have x, y, z. But well, this is not x, y, z, though. So that's the first question in the quiz is called, what is, what is n, e, d? So we're going to solve that problem later on. But you can see if I threw this equation on your face, that's not fair. So we need step-by-step -step understanding about the flat dynamics. Okay? It's not possible to digest this one right now. But on, on the other hand, on the other hand, by the end of this module, you will be able to have uh, understanding about this okay? and how these equations are from. So the reading assignments for this week will be um, the Princeton Professor Stengel's website for flat dynamics. And uh, his book is considered as a classic, uh, comprehensive. Okay, comprehensive. Uh, the other one I'm circulating to you uh, is uh, written by uh, uh, Professor Beard. I know him in person pretty well. And uh, they, they have a deck of slides for the book and projects designed for the book. Majority of the contents focus on traditional fixed wing flight dynamics and navigation guidance and control, everything. Okay, everything. So it's a very good set of slides. Uh, so I adopted some slides from these sources. And also, I hope you are going to read aerospace block set overview, meaning in MATLAB, flat dynamics has been made easy. They build those blocks for you, so you don't have to, uh, like solving these differential equations, enter all this stuff from bottom up. No, you don't have to. They already build modulized, okay, modulized. So at this point, let me remind you one thing. Flat dynamics, at uh, 60 degree of freedom, you need 12 differential equations. 
But sometimes you don't need all of these. For example, if you are doing the cruising, okay, you are flying flat, cruising, so then you can simplify these equations, okay? So it's not 12, probably. So we are going to see those uh, longitudinal, lateral dynamics, longitudinal dynamics, and trim conditions, and so on and so forth. So we can, we can, we can simplify these equations, because this is just too messy, okay? Uh, on the other hand, in MATLAB Simulink, uh, solving these equations is straightforward, actually. You can do that. You can do that. OK. So to give you an appreciation that a flight dynamics is a semester long, semester long, semester long course. Yeah. So take a look at this. OK, take a look at this. So there are about 24 uh, lectures, okay? It's a semester-long course, uh, modules. Let me go through one by one. So you, you, you should know that if anything is missing from here, it's not a surprise because it's such rich contents. So first, you need the mathematic preliminaries. What do we need in, in this mathematics here? You need to know differential equation. So all of you had uh, differential equations, yes? Did you have a uh, uh, Laplace transform, by the way? Yes, that's excellent. That's enough, OK? And uh, some vector calculus, so you know the vectors, matrix, OK? And so on and so forth. Okay. So point mass dynamics and error dynamics forces. We, we, we just learned error dynamics forces, drag, lift, OK? and angle of attack. And point mass dynamics meaning we didn't consider the attitude, just the point mass. So this is the foundation for us to learn something more comprehensive later on. And the low speed aerodynamics is sub subsonic level. Okay? So then however, at the high speed aerodynamics, those induced drag due to lift and others and uh, like skin friction, okay? So we already covered that. Uh, regarding aerodynamic movements, we also covered that in aerodynamics. Because your center of gravity and the center of aerodynamics, they are different. So inherently, there is some uh, turning momentum existing there when the angle of attack is not zero. E sometimes even it is zero, then it, because of uh, unsymmetric uh, the foil shape, so there may still exist uh, an aerodynamic moments to hold up so you don't turn this way or, or this way. Uh, okay, now, cruising flight performance, that already said, can be simplified from the six degree of freedom, um, the cruising flight performance. Then gliding, climbing, and turning performance. The, when you're gliding, when you're turning, so your, your dynamics uh, has some special properties. So, so then we can uh, simplify that, some very uh, unique characteristics. Uh, equation of motion, uh, we are <laughs> well seeing in the first slide, the one slide. So have you seen that? So let me go back. So this is the cover slide. This is our first slide. This is flight dynamics. Okay, this is a semester-long course to understand this. But to understand this, okay, you need to understand aerodynamics. Okay, you understand point mass dynamics, and you need to understand the different simplifications. And this is the full uh, equations of motion, six degree of freedom, twelve differential equations. Okay, and then. They need to talk about control devices and the systems. I'm going to talk about control devi devices. Sometimes it's also called control authorities. Like, or sometimes they call control surfaces. So like, uh, like a rudder, elevator, you know, aileron, and so, so on and so forth. We'll, we'll go through that later. Uh, and then 
a linearized equation of motion, longitudinal dynamics, lateral dynamics, we're going to cover all of them. And uh, time response, how you analyze it, that's in the basic system part. I probably don't have time to do that. However, next Monday, next Monday we're going to do a Simulink study uh, of uh, quadrilateral dynamics. So flat dynamics today, we focus on fixed wing, traditional aircraft uh, flat dynamics. Then we can leverage this knowledge into the next Monday's lecture on um, quadrilateral simulation, okay? Because today's is the foundation for next Monday. <coughs> if anybody missed today's <coughs> lecture, you should watch the recorded lecture to be able to understand Monday's. And uh, next week's homework is a little bit harder one. So far you got homework with writing assignments, essay type. Next week's assignment will be simulating based uh, equation of motion. Okay, go ahead. That's a very good question. I need to communicate with my TA. It's supposed to be weekly. So you haven't received any grades in the Monday? Don't worry, we are going to um, um, make up okay, over this weekend. Okay, thank you. Yeah, I haven't got a chance to read all of them. Okay, so I'm willing to learn to see your company's ideas. Okay, so first three, three of them, to three, uh, first three weeks, so is to make sure that uh, you are expected to run a company. So you know I have that expectation for you. Get it? Okay. Um, but we really need to get to some techniques like from next week's homework. So let me go through a little bit further. Transfer function, frequency response, we're not going to do that. In vibration course, you are going to cover that. Uh, loop locus, parameter variations, probably not. Advanced longitudinal dynamics, flying quality criteria. This it could be interesting. So the aircraft is flying this way or flying that way. So what is the flight quality? How to access that? If you suddenly turn, you may break the structure because of you know those acceleration is too big. So the quality is low then. So that kind of assessment of flying quality and advanced lateral directional dynamics, maneuvering at high angle and rates, aeroelasticity and a few slosh. So you have a few slosh in it. So that topic, will, of course, we don't touch. Um, problems of high speed and attitude, atmospheric hazard to flight, flight and wind tunnel testing. Uh, so all these topics will be uh, covered in the lecture. You will be able to see here, OK? You see here. And the textbook is by uh, Princeton University Press. Uh, again, MathWorks, MathWorks um, has very comprehensive aerospace toolbox that can deal with the flight dynamics navigation and many of them. So check out what's there. And don't, do not reinvent the wheel, OK? Of course, when you learn, you can, reinvent, you can practice from the beginning. But when you become a professional, you need to know where are the resources that can help you to get the job done as soon as you can, instead of doing that. So let's start with uh, your PGR, uh, raw PGR, OK? So this is the aircraft. So you have uh, uh, controlled raw pitch yaw, OK? Raw pitch yaw. Here's an uh, interesting uh, animation you are going to see, OK? So the control surface is like this, OK? So then this is uh, different types of uh, control surfaces, OK? So, so you have a, like a joystick. Uh, you have a you press, so you have a pilot. So in the previous early days of flight, so the people will be able to figure out a way 
how to make those surfaces uh, connected where the cable being able to control by the pilots. So, um, so again, and this is animation for those control surfaces. When you change the surface, then you can see aircraft is moving also differently. Okay, different. Okay. Get it? So um, I'll go back a slide. So everything is not like dynamic, <laughs> not static anymore. So this is static, but this is dynamic. So when we see dynamics, there are two meanings usually. So dynamics meaning you, it's changing. But we need to ask, changing with respect to what? The two variables. One is changing over time. So at any different time instant, the aircraft in the air is never the same. It's changing. It's governed by something. That's one thing. Another thing is dynamic meaning um, changing with respect to spatial variables, OK? OK, so dynamic changing. So think about when you cook. So, so spatially changing. So we make a pancake, OK? All right, so the temperature is not only changing over time, but also changing over space, spatial variables. So we are not going to talk about dynamics changing over the spatial variable x, y, z. We only focus on changing over time. So when we do that, we need to specify what is the speed of the change. So that's why we need to do DDT, right? DDT, the differential equations. So, so today, we are going to cover flight dynamics. You had enough starting um, basic knowledge about it. So the question is, why bother? Show me the big picture where I am. So usually when you go to some place you don't know, like aerodynamic, or like flat dynamics, this is an area you do not know, you better to have some map like into the park so there's a place that you are here, <laughs> OK? You need that. So here is the map. So where is the flat dynamics? Let me let me tell you the design process first. Okay. So I want you to understand where you are. Uh, this is uh, Randy Beer's book, the book you are circulating. So basically, I have uh, in principle is not necessarily like flat dynamics. Any real world dynamic system is like this. Flat physical system. Okay. Um, I want to uh, understand uh, how it changes, the dynamics about it. So we establish a model, OK? We establish a model for that. After the model, uh, we, we, we try a few designs, OK? Then uh, try several designs. Then we try to make it under control. Then. Uh, we iterated the process, uh, make linearization, model reduction, simplification, to start the system, start the system. So this probably is a little bit abstract. Let me use an example. So you have a room. You want to make the room temperature under control. What are you going to do? It's not like suddenly very hot, suddenly very cold, or it's so hot, I want this one to be cool. So there's a difference. What are you going to do? You need to introduce regulator or controller. So I know most of you do not have the control knowledge, but this is basically the control. You can see there's a loop. There's a loop closed, OK? Loop closed. So you need to understand what is the room temperature dynamics, OK? It's usually governed by physical laws, OK? Our flat dynamics in aerospace in unmanned aircraft systems, in many aircraft systems, so on and so forth, the model is uh, approximation of the physical system. Okay? So, uh, but be careful, I said approximation, because 
those parameters may not be so accurate. Okay, so it's always an approximation. But if we, it is approximate good enough, then it's good enough. Then get the job done. So instead of doing a, experiments on a real system, so you just focus on the simulation. Do this iteration in here. Okay, using different design of your controls. Okay. When everything is okay, then you start to try on the real system. So you don't have to crash on thousands of aircrafts in the real world. So this simulation model-based thing. Uh, so sometimes it's also called a uh, math principle. Okay? So math principle. There's <coughs> a modeling. Analysis and design. So modeling, analysis, and design. So modeling, analysis, and design. Okay, modeling, analysis, and design. So the basic starting point is modeling. So we need flight dynamics to come out with a model of aircraft. Then we study different control laws, different things on top of the model is simulated. You are not going to crash the real aircraft. So the model is important. To have a good starting point in the model, then you need flight dynamics to have that model. Okay? Okay, so I think uh, this is clear. The why what I call math, uh, math principle. And uh, you know, <clears throat> so I want to tell you that uh, I published a book. It's called Mad Book. Okay, uh, there's a link under my lab uh, called Modern Analysis Design of Control Systems. It's 500 some pages. So that Mad Book is very good for you to understand all the control design related to this. I'll send a link to you via announcement. So uh, we're trying to understand why flight dynamics. So this is the first uh, motivation that we need a model of the system to begin the process of MAD. Okay. So let's zoom in about specifically for our unmanned aircraft system. If we zoom in, then what we are going to do is like this. Okay. So, so this is the unmanned air, uh, air vehicle, but uh, you don't have a direct measurement of a lot of things. Okay, you don't. So you have to infer or indirectly estimate it. Okay, so many of those things you do not know. So you do know that you can add servo commands to those surfaces. Okay? The control surfaces, you remember? You add to the control surfaces. You are going to change the uh, uh, many aircraft's states, like attitude, the angle, uh, height, you know, your different. So the states inside, you cannot measure, but you can estimate based on onboard sensors like IMU, Inertia measurement unit, GPS, pitot tube. Remember pitot tube? So dyna dynamic pressure we covered Monday. Um, so all those uh, onboard sensors. Use that one together. We can estimate the inner estimate of the at, uh, states. What is the state? Okay, state is a collection of all left hand side in here. Okay, so 12 variables put into a vector form. That vector form is called X. Yeah, sometimes it is called state vector. State vector. So, of course, in this case, State vector is 12 by 1. It's 12 by 1. 
Okay, you have 12, but it's one column, 12 by one vector, okay? So this is its size, okay? So this is x. But the x is not directly measurable, meaning these variables you cannot measure directly. Okay? But I hope I can. So then you, 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 you do something called x. It's called state estimate. State estimate. Okay? State estimate. So you need state estimator to get estimate of this x. X is that vector, OK? Yeah, vector. So, <clears throat> so this is from in and out point of view. So the wind is here, and you have a control servo, the servo command to change the surface. Then you change the state x. Then also you got x hat change. So from that, how are you going to uh, make things under control, meaning I I have destination, I have a map, you want to go from A to B. How, 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 you, how you realize that? So that is exactly flight control, flight control, based on this fundamental flight dynamics in here. Okay? So to be able to estimate the X, you need to understand that set of this differential equation and then when you use the state, you can see the state estimate okay, is used in different stages of this thing. So this is called hierarchical uh, structure okay, configuration. It's sometimes used in the world architecture. So to make the drone under control to move as you wished or as you design, it should go through this type of architecture to make that happen. To understand this, the foundation is the flight dynamics here. Okay? And you can see the wind will also come into play, and the wind may be unknown to you. So, but you still want the system to do the job along the path to move, irrespective of the wind. Okay? So that is something called the closed close loop Robustness, okay? You are robust, okay? Just like yourself, you got a cut and a wound, or, you know, you are not going to die, okay? You, you, you recover from it, you are robust to those things, okay? So this is something called disturbance, or external disturbance. Sometimes there are some internal disturbance, some, some, some sort of component failure, or temperature is too high, so some resistor is changing the value, and so internal stuff. But let us move from here to up a little bit. Autopilot is to receive the estimate of the state and receive the desired airspeed attitude commands. So the commands meaning desired values. Okay, I'll give you the command. You follow me. Follow those commands. So give you this command to the autopilot. So, but I cannot follow you. Actually, I compare these two, so I position arrow. So the arrow will tell the, uh, the path follow, uh, so the, the feed to the upper superv supervisor layer. So the autopilot is basically in and out, the out servo commands to the system, give you how much you should turn the servos. And so autopilots, how, how to generate those desired command? That is from the path following unit. Path follow unit is first from the path definition and see where you actually are, okay? And what's the position arrow in the uh, control? I thought you can control, but you actually didn't. There's some position arrow in here. Feed to this one to correct. The path fully knows actually where, how, how far away you are from the desired one. Then you feed this. Now you should turn this way. Uh, how much? So that's called uh, uh, airspeed, attitude, heading, and command, all the pilots. Okay? And so 
this one path manager is to receive even higher level commands like from A to B. <laughs> so you say the waypoints meaning <coughs> A to B to C, so those are waypoints. That's depending on the objective or destination or what do you really want. So how to generate those waypoints is based on the planner. Uh, the planner is giving the information of oh, where you want to go, and along the path, what are the obstacles. Then I generate some waypoints so you don't hit this while you go to your destination. So you generate waypoints. So you can see this type of um, hierarchical architecture. So the common thing is based on you know where you are x hat. To get the x hat, you need to get a state estimator. To get a state estimator, you need to know that magic big equation. So that's why, again, aerodynamics very important. So to those essentials of the aerodynamic topics, as we have seen the big list of 24 topics, so I believe we only need four to be essential for all of you, OK? So we are going to cover those essential flat dynamics topics, OK? So first of all, we understand equation of motion. So the one I showed you on the first slide is called uh, the fully nonlinear equation of motion. Okay, fully nonlinear equation of motion. However, in a different situation, so they are so coupled, they are so coupled. But in different situations, you will be able to decouple, especially, say, longitudinal or lateral, they could be decoupled. Okay, say, for example, you are doing cruising, and you probably don't have to care about those longitudinal dynamics is still there, but focus on lateral, okay? okay? So can be a lot of simplified models. You agree? Okay? And so equation of motion is our today's focus. But on the other hand, we have dimensionless coefficient for aerodynamics. And there are also other coefficients is called stability and the control derivatives. This is a little bit involved to explain, but uh, let me try to help you to understand this. Derivatives, remember the word derivatives. Then third one is the trim analysis regarding where you are flying level, you the climbing is also trim. Okay, you keep this attitude not changing, so it's kind of trim process. To maintain that process, there must be some sort of conditions must be satisfied. Then, uh, then we call that sort of trim condition, uh, leveling, uh, climbing, and gliding, and turning maneuvers. All these things. Okay. Uh, so that's the fourth part is linearized dynamic analysis. So. Because it's so nonlinear, we do not gain insights into this flat dynamics. So we really need to have a more analytical, better insights into the dynamics. So we linearize it to see what's the situation there. Okay. How many of you got a vibration so far? Many of you. That makes me life easier. But for some of you, never get a vibration. In you probably have, will have some hard time. But I'm not going to giving that situation. I'm not going to go there too much, OK? Uh, so let's do a course effect point of view. So I give you something stimulus, you get output. So it's a dynamic system point, yin and out. What is yin? Yin is delta. What is out? Out is? x. So this is something I call state equation. 
Oh, this is called state equation. But when I say state equation, actually we are talking about state differential equation. We don't consider that. So it's x dot is f. We use capital X to be a vector, OK? We should use an a capital X to be a vector, to be a vector. So this is delta is my control, OK? But we actually cannot measure all of them, OK? So, so this is called state equation. There's another one called output equation. So the output equation is y equals g of x, g of x. You may say, oh, I don't see an output equation here. Is something wrong? No. The easiest way is to write y is x, OK? <laughs> right? So the easiest way. So well, we do have an uh, output equation as well, so it's uh, y equals x. Okay. So that's a very ten thousand feet of a view <laughs> from math point of view. We need to zoom in, should we? So these are the con this oh, this is a vector. Okay, this is a vector. There's a number of control surfaces. Okay. So far, I believe everybody is easy, all right? So you can follow. No problem? OK, we'll move on. So now we will see what is x. I, I told you x is a tall vector, 12 by 1, 12 of them. So stays on the control inputs, OK? And uh, this is vector x. Go back, vector x and vector delta. So depending on different aircrafts, and you may have different delta. So elevator, throttle, aileron, uh, rudder. So the throttle is uh, is the throttle you control to the uh, the speed of the propeller. Okay. So that you can up and down. So up and down. Uh, so we did something uh, using conventional idea of okay, x, y, z, x, y, z, you have, so we need a coordinate system, right? So we need a coordinate system. So x, y, z, u, v, w, z, phi, psi, p, k, r. So these are the regular notation for the x. Okay? So you should know this. You should know this. There's no escape. So, so we have four groups. Actually, it's two bigger groups. One is position and attitude, position and attitude, and its velocities. So this is actually six of them together. Three plus three, three plus three. Okay. So, so the velocity is derivative of position. This is a derivative of attitude. Okay, so we are going to see these variables definition of uh, coordinate systems later on. Okay, later on. But you do know that any object in the space is stay there. You should stay there. You should tell what's the position x, y, z, huh? and what is the attitude. You know? Okay. But if it changes, then what's the velocity moving? The uh, changes how it turns, the angular velocity. So this is exactly six degree of freedom states. You need 12. Okay, you need 12. All right, so <clears throat> these are the definition of what we say that this, this x dot is fx delta, okay? So based on that, we can do, um, so we, there's something, there's something uh, neglected here in a small 
letter saying, we assuming the atmosphere is calm, not turbulent. Assume the aircraft is a symmetric. Okay, it's symmetric. So then we can ignore those cross product of the inertia. So you know you have IXX, IYY, IZZ, these are moment of inertia. Okay? But in principle, you should have cross products, IXY, right? IXY. So we ignore all those things. Okay? So for linear acceleration, this is just Newton's second law, right? Newton's second law. Newton's second law. So this mg is a, is a gravity. And then this Eulerian angle, theta phi psi. OK, theta phi psi. So uvw, m is your mass. So the force is the summation of aerodynamic force, gravity force, and gyroscopic force. Gyroscopic force is, this is a standard rigid body dynamics. So it's the velocity and angular, angular speed, or uh, angular PKR, uh, PKR and UVW, they have a, a product produce a term like this, okay? So this is called gyro term. So one is angular velocity, r and q. Another one is linear velocity, v and w. So when you move linearly while you have turning, there is a coupling of linear motion and turning motion. It's called gyros gyroscopic force. So if you do not understand this part, check textbook, okay, how this is showing up, how this is showing up. Uh, so we introduce um, kind of uh, relationship between position and velocity. So this is called dynamic equation, dynamic equation. Uh, some other things is called kinematic equations meaning this, the, the, the speed, uh, x, x dot, y dot, z dot directly, how they can link to the UVW. So this is called uh, the coordinate. This is a matrix, OK? This is a matrix. This is a rotation matrix, notation matrix from body, from the body coordinate system. To the you know uh, to the Earth's uh, coordinate system, so we are going to go through that uh, in a later, okay, in a later part. So after that, we can see the altitude and angular velocity uh, are connected through this. So this is angular speed, but PKR is connected. Uh, is is uh, is PKR is used in here from the body coordinate system. So I think we, we, we need to do small thing here to understand, okay? So so something like this. So this one is on the earth, okay? So you have X, Y, Z. Okay, X, Y, Z. So X, Y, Z is uh, in the Earth's coordinate system. Okay, so, so N. Okay north coordinate, coordinate system. But you have a body in here. Uh, you have a body in here. So you have an aircraft. You are moving this direction. OK? I'm moving this direction. OK? So we can establish a coordinate system along. So this is called body coordinate system, BCS. OK? BCS. PCS. So the anything, the PQR, okay, the PQR is actually relative to the body coordinate system, the PQR, okay, the rotation around. So however, <coughs> this one, in this coordinate system, you have something like this. 
something like this. So you have uh, angle um, here, you have angle there, you have angle uh, this angle to this angle. So this is kind of Eulerian uh, uh, coordinate system. Okay. So this is here. So you have uh, different angles set up. I think we can do the theta plus C phi. Okay, theta plus C phi. So depending, I'll show you the exact notation in the end. So these two coordinate system has that coordinate tran tra uh, transformation matrix is like this. This is a three by three matrix involving those uh, Eulerian angle. Okay. So. But um, in this model, so we're trying to go back a slide. So we're trying to zoom in to see what's inside in here. So we understand what is delta, what is x. Delta is this, x is this. And we also understand the body coordinate system, body, body coordinate system in here versus the Earth's coordinate system. So. That's why you have those angles, strange angles in here. So you need a transformation in here, rotation transformation. I'll go through that one later. OK? So again, PQR, PQR is within the coordinate, is in the body coordinate system. Or set of is uh, between relative to the body coordinate system relative to the Earth's coordinate system, OK? And uh, x, y, z is, uh, is uh, Earth's coordinate system. And u, v, w is uh, on, the, on, the body, uh, on the body system here. So u, v, w, we, yeah, we, we, we watch from uh, ground, OK? Watch from ground, OK? It's uh, about this. So they have a coordinate transformation as well. So, so this type of relationship, static relationship, uh, speed versus speed in a different coordinate system, okay, is called kinematic equation. If it's regarding acceleration and force relationship or acceleration versus moments, Okay, so that's called dynamics equation. So two groups, dynamics equation, six of them, kinematics equation, six of them, together 12. Uh, remember, for the angular acceleration, we have three things do not ignore, L, M, and N. Those are, are the total moments, total moments acting on air aircraft. So. It's usually is aerodynamic moments, and here we have gyroscopic moments. Okay, so we so far talked about x and delta. What is this magic f? The f is very tough, actually. F actually is um, including nonlinearities and model uncertainties. So, what are those nonlinearities sources? Trigonometry projection, okay, and that projection may depend be dependent on how high you are height, and gyroscopic effect is cross product is nonlinear. Aerodynamics, though dynamic pressure, Reynolds, Reynolds number dependence, store and partial separation of vertices, all these things are inherently nonlinear. In addition to nonlinearities. There's something maybe linear, maybe nonlinear, but we do not know. It's called uncertain. So, so for gyroscopic gravity, is crispy. It's, it's, it's perfectly known. Uh, we can measure mass, inertia, attitude accurately. However, aerodynamic part is hard. Uh, so different viscous effects, lifting surface track, and the propeller and the fuselage aerodynamics in addition to that. So it's tough, it's tough. 
So let's uh, talk about flight dynamics. Remember, we need an x. Um, so, so basically, we have flight dynamics. When you apply delta, the rudder or whatever control surface variable, uh, the system, f the internal state will be different. Will be different. But the objectives of doing this is, so why we need to care about flight dynamics is because we need to go through the navigation part such that we navigate the system to move as we wished in a way. So then we need to decide what's the proper navigation control surface variable. Okay. Did you get the point? If you want to navigate the aircraft to fly in the way you like or you pre-specified, you have to decide what is the delta. So it's an inverse problem. Giving x, find me delta, right? So that's navigation or control. But flight dynamics is giving the delta, what is the x? Do you see that? Okay. So they are cascaded, in fact. So, huh. so the flat dynamics is considered as an inner dynamics, and navigation is an outer dynamics. Usually, is what we care about. If you want to do a nice job in navigating the aircraft, you have to do a, a good job in the inside about 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 flat dynamics. So again, you can see that uh, dynamics is giving giving all these control surface variable, so elevator, the throttle, uh, aileron, and rudder, and you have, have this vector of control variables. Then uh, you have uh, wow. dynamics of these 12 uh, of these uh, variables, x, y, z also. Okay? So these are the usually uh, x dynamics you can change, you can change. The navigation part, is basically you want, uh, so you, are, you want to uh, make sure all these things are under control, under control, okay? So, so navigation block is you, you want to make speed and attitude and uh, uh, rotational acceleration all under control such that your position and the flight, flight angle, the the path angle is well defined. Okay, well defined. So that kind of navigation is what we care about. So again, let's return back to this. Okay, let's back to this. Okay. So you can see that you have very high level tasks. Say, oh, I want to go from A to B. In between, we have all. I have obstacles here and there. Well, we know that. Tell me how I, are you going to do that? To do that, you need to step by step. Because at the aircraft level, what you can control is those servos about surface movement. Okay? But you cannot directly give that. You should do the decomposition layer by layer to feed it. I explained this one uh, uh, again um, already. So I don't want to uh, explain it again. But what we just zoomed in to see the states inside, and to tell you that uh, how we can do, uh, uh, tell you that we need to do estimation because they are not all measurable. Okay, I know this pass following part, pass following part, is what we call the navigation part. Okay, it's the navigation part. So, okay, so uh, let's uh, take a look. So, this is actually still a very high, pro uh, high uh, hard problem. So, it will be nice we can make longitudinal and lateral dynamics decoupled. So, let's explain that, okay? Can explain that. If the aircraft is symmetric, so the flight dynamics can be further decoupled into two independent parts, okay, independent parts. 
So it's, you can group them into delta longitudinal variable, latitude variable. Through the flight dynamics, you have uh, longitudinal uh, steady variables, vectors, lateral and steady vectors. So then in between, there's no coupling, no coupling. So that will simplify our life a lot, okay? And in many of the uh, flights, okay, this situation is very common, okay? Of course, not in a very transient stage, okay? So for longitudinal, you have uh, U, W, theta, and Q. These four variables, okay? Elevator and thrust, okay? Elevator and thrust. Longitudinal, okay, longitudinal. Lateral directional is uh, it's called uh, aileron and rudder. Rudder is this one and pitch this one. So you have you have uh, V and uh, you have phi and P and Q, okay. Okay. So throttle has effect on the lateral dynamics as well, but. Uh, and with appropriate aileron and rudder combination, we can ignore those facts, okay? Ignore those facts. So we can focus on a lateral directional dynamics. And uh, we assume that longitudinal dynamics uh, will be affected by the thrust, throttle directly, okay? So with that, we're going to further zoom in to see what are the uh, uh, longitudinal lateral uh, dynamics. So, at this point, we need to understand change of variable sometimes will help us to gain insights. Okay? So, right now, we are going to do that. So, uh, there are alternative state descriptions. Okay? State descriptions. Um, the state variables, so let me add a high level comment on the state vector. So we choose that 12 um, variables as state variables, vector, but that is not unique, okay? Not unique. So if I say, oh, you have x that is a vector, uh, is, is a state variable, oh, let's do a uh, like a time a constant is a times a small k times x is also a vector, is also a state vector. So there are infinite many choices of k here. There are also infinite choices of variables. But in principle, how you can tell this is a state vector or not? Physi philosophically speaking. So the state variable is a collection of, of ver state variable, a collection of variable, collection of minimum number of variables. So you can use a lot of variables to predict the system state given current state. So that's the principle. That's the principle. So if you know what is where you are now, uh, how the state of the of the system now, and you have a, a state variable, a set of state variable, then you will be able to predict the next time moment. So to be able to predict the system state, given the current state. Okay. So the key word here is minimum. Okay. But it's not unique. It may not be unique. So 
this slide to tell you that in some cases, we choose uh, different state descriptions. Okay? So in our case, um, translational dynamics using UVW is the most useful in a six degree of freedom flight simulation. But sometimes uh, they use uh, the speed, the total speed, then you project the speed in this. So you can use speed, you have a direction, you speed, then you project this one to UVW. Okay, UVW. So the alpha beta is like an angle of attack, okay, side slip. Okay, so this is a flight angle. Okay, flight angle. Uh, so this v, this v alpha beta. So I, I think you can understand this uh, because your nosing. So this is your nose, right? Okay, let me use another color. So this is your nose. So this is the x-axis of longitudinal. But your speed is like v. The total direction of speed is v. Vector direction is v. So you project the v to uh, this angle, project to this. So, so you have another angle in here. Then you put another angle in here. OK? Okay, so you, you project down and go there. So that's that's your uh, that's your alpha and beta, alpha and beta. So I hope you understand that. So this red arrow, this red arrow in here, and this green arrow is your body direction. The speed vector there is never is never the same. But this angle, total angle, is alpha square plus beta square and square root, right? The total angle. But we project to the plane, and the project there is alpha and beta, right? So I hope this is clear. So this is called V alpha beta. So it's easiest to describe aerodynamics because we need the angle of attack. Remember, we use that word, angle of attack. The longitudinal dynamics. So this is uh, translational dynamics. Uh, then longitudinal dynamics, V alpha theta Q, is a convention description. So in this case, and, uh, we use V, uh, we use uh, lift, gamma, and Q. And so those uh, is best for the nonlinear trajectory optimization. And sometimes all states are measurable. Uh, then uh, this is more natural for control. But uh, we are not going to go through the details in here. Um, in com so this is for analytical analysis for us to understand. So, but in reality, we don't go to these details here. Next, let's see some simplifications. So you can see we use, uh, I said it's six degree of freedom. Um, many times we neglect or assume aspect of the system, look at the overall behavior. So we have different reduced order models, okay, reduced order models. Then, uh, so in this case, instead of using X, Y, Z, uh, so we, 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 we introduce kind of course over ground, course over ground, okay, epsilon, course over ground. So I'm here, then aircraft is there, the, the, the projection on the ground is there, so I have a distance going there, so this is called course. Uh, so NED is north, east, and down. North, east, and down. Then, uh, our north is north, east, and down, okay? North, east, and down, okay? That's usually we define our x, y, z, OK? Uh, so in this uh, two degree of freedom navigation plus one degree of point mass, we only need x, y, and epsilon, OK? So it's a very, very basic. 
uh, equation of motion. EOM stands for equation of motion. This is uh, idealized point mass, okay, point mass. And uh, the epsilon is my course, is the angle, is the angle. And uh, so you cannot turn too much, you have maximum, uh, you have minimum radius of your turning, okay? So that's a very uh, point, easy point mass. However, we can do 3D point mass. Uh, again, we do uh, 3D navigation, but it's 1D point mass. Still, uh, we have this. Uh, so we have a speed, we have uh, epsilon and gamma. Okay, epsilon and gamma. So suppose we can control gamma, control epsilon. Okay, then you have x, y, z. So. These are the point mass. Um, a lot of people using this as a starting point for drone research. So this is too much simplification. Einstein said um, everything should be made as simple as possible, but not more, not simpler, OK? Not more. So meaning. Depending on your task, your situation, you choose the right model instead of always using this messy six degree of freedom, fully nonlinear model. It's not really necessary in some times. Okay? So then like three degree of navigation, two point, de two, point uh, two degree of freedom point mass, you have x, y, z, gamma, epsilon, uh, those are the states, so you can control velocity, control the lift, uh, you control the, uh, the, the angle here, the course angle phi, okay? And uh, of course, three degree of navigation, three degree of point. So you can do many, uh, many of these simplifications by introducing more uh, accuracy, uh, more uh, complexities into the model. So we are not going to go for the details, okay? So you can do more dynamics variables involved. We have more details. Okay. So those are concept of model simplification. Well, aerodynamics. I think it's easier for us now. And now we look at this one. You will feel this is our friend. So you have dynamic head, dynamic pressure. Uh, you have. Uh, uh, cross-section uh, equivalent surface area. This is S. So this is lift. So this is linked to the aircraft and the flow geometry, and Reynolds numbers, Mach numbers, and uh, its airfoil shape. So this is our lift. So, so we define aerodynamic forces and moments and uh, capital XYZ and small area MN. So Depending on how you get the experimental data, you use lift drag and uh, Y and T. T is your uh, uh, aerodynamic moments and RMN. So we do, uh, we do dimensional analysis. You can factor different contributions of this. So this is called dynamic pressure, air, air and craft size. This, uh, uh, this is a unit of, of area, cross-section area. Aircraft geometry, relative flow angle, and renal number. So these are the factors affecting this, this capital L lift. Similar things we can do for those uh, moments. So we are going to introduce you the moments. Give me a second. So. <coughs> If we do not consider those dimensionless force, uh, so we use a capital C L lift, drag, and moments. Okay, so these aerodynamic forces and moments, okay, they are function of four categories. It's air, aircraft itself, geometry. Like, uh, what is AR, by the way? Aspect ratio. Aspect ratio. You, now you see in your dictionary. Uh, it's, not, uh, it's not augmented reality. 
AR is a, a augmented reality as well. AR, VR, virtual reality. So AR is aspect ratio, taper, dihedral, and so on and so forth. And control surfaces, those delta is very small, small angle. So once you change that delta, you also change everything here as well. Remember, you, you, your surface change. Aerodynamic also change. A relative flow angle, so this is like an angle of attack, is um, those alpha, beta, gamma, and PQR. So this is with respect to uh, the V. The V is the relative velocity. So usually it's relative to the wind. Relative to the wind. Okay. And uh, PQR. Uh, and B and C and is uh, like uh, the the width, the chord length of the wind and so on and so forth. So variation speed is small, can be assumed constant, factored out. So these are the renal numbers. So all these factors will influence this. But which one is your authority to change? The one actually here. This is your control authority. All others, you, it's already there, you cannot change. So that's why aircraft navigation and control is interesting. It's in the sense that if you use your small ideas to change this one, this, this system will behave nicely. If originally it's not nice, you can make it nice by tuning that nicely or in a smart way. So the rest can be represented with linear terms. So, it's, so basically the nonlinear function of all these factors, but majority of them uh, can be considered as quite linear. If it is linear, we do control derivative. It's called derivatives, stability and control derivatives. So let me, let me give, an, give you an example like this. So you have, a, you have a y equals fx, OK? Equals fx. So this can be approximated by uh, x times something here plus high order terms, okay? H hot is a high order terms, okay? So we don't care about this. So what's the inside of here? This is just the slope of a linear relationship, right? So this relationship is called partial f, partial x. It's a derivative, okay? So that's why we call like a derivative, like a we do, usually we write down in the f, f, x, right? F sub x, right? In this case, if I want to know that how my CL is changing with respect to my ele elevator change, I simply add delta in the sub, similar to this idea, OK? Similar to this idea. So then we have another new coefficient, OK? Because CL originally is a function of delta E and other things, OK? Like Mach number, as, OK? So this is called control derivatives of lift. So my, my, my surface change will result in how my lift coefficient change, right? So this is called control coefficient of lift. Control derivative, OK? So what I'm going to show you next is, <laughs> don't feel scared, I'll tell you. Some of them are not important, OK? Some of them are zero. So you have uh, so many aerodynamic, um, aerodynamic coefficients, like lift, drag. This is CY. Um, is similar to the lift, okay? The CL, uh, MN, these are the moments, okay? The moments. 
So what are the most important ones? So you have uh, many factors in here. So it's called R for beta, PQR, uh, uh, the control derivatives, delta e elevator, delta L1, uh, aileron, and the delta rudder. Nonlinear chain is uh, alpha, uh, angle, total angle of attack, and lambda. Okay. Uh, if alpha a delta are small ang angular deflection with respect to a very small zero position, is called trim deflection. And the angle of attack perturbation around this alpha prime. So, so you, as I said, I showed you one thing like a delta e in here, elevator will change your li lift, also change your uh, drag. So these they, these are the Control resulted, uh, control resulted. So these are the minor importance. It's not so big deal. But what is estimated by calculation? So these are the estimated by calculations. And these are estimated trim out by uh, flight tests. You can get all these parameters. So th those red ones are very hard to get. Uh, so almost impossible to get. And uh, So these yellow ones can be estimated. Or oh, trim out meaning when you're in trim condition is zero. Okay. All right. And also this gray gray thing here, gray thing here. So these things derivatives are almost zero. So there's not related. So this 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 y equals this x, this one is almost zero. So this gray ones. Let me give you an example. So the lift is not related to your deflection. Also, uh, the lift is not related to your PQR. Uh, it's not related to your, let me say, your rate is your rate, okay? and so on and so forth. But there are something called very important. It's called stability derivative. I really wish to go through this one with you right now, and before we go, I'll show you, okay? So, force and the moment expectation. So this is my lift. Lift is, uh, uh, the lift derivative with respect to the alpha. So this is when alpha is, uh, is in a trim condition. So this is one of the, alpha in here, q in here, and delta e is in here, OK? Delta e is in here. So this is your, uh, this is a, a equ equilibrium point. So when you fly is there, but you, s you change around that equilibrium point, then you have a, a delta like this. So this derivative is like this, OK? So this, this is called lift. Is written in terms of that compared to this one. This is lift. You have one, two, three, four. Okay, but we only have uh, three terms. Okay, so these are the bar term is equal is called trim condition equilibrium point. Okay, pitch moments. Also, we have three terms in here. Raw moment. We have three terms as as well. Okay, so. In this pitching equation, let's uh, ignore those gyroscopic terms because you are turning very slowly. It's not a big deal. Then you have Q dot, uh, Q hat dot is my uh, pitching equation will be like this, will be like this. So differential equation and uh, here. So this CMQ here is very, very important. So all these factors are not important. So let me sh let me show you why this is important. Okay. Uh, CMQ. Why it is important. Okay. Okay. My time's up. But give me one more minute, and I'll, I'll one more slide to show. I will let you go. So this basically, can you guys look at this equation? So let's assume that we are writing, ignore all those constants. These are constant. So I'm writing something like this. I write the IQ, uh, no, let's write Q, okay? Q dot 
equals something. This one, this one are constant. This one is also constant. That's a constant. Okay. So you have a constant one times constant uh, q dot. You have a constant two plus what's left is this guy. C m q and times q times q. What does that mean? So let me tell you something like this. So you have a differential equation. You have a differential equation. Uh, y dot equals minus y versus y dot is y. What is the solution? The solution y here is initial condition e minus minus t. This y t is y zero e plus t. Okay. Let's do two. You will see clearly. So you have minus two t. You have positive two t. So in other words, the coefficient here, the cm q cm q, if it is positive, the system is unstable. You will blow up. When t as t goes, this term will go infinity. So. So it's a problem. So this, if this term is positive, it's a problem. Okay. So it will be nice to check this term. Okay. Other is not important at this picture, I hope. So it turns out that it has to be negative. Okay, it has to be negative. So these are the pictures to show that. This a CM is a is is a this CM this is CM over Q is this way. Can you see that? It's going down. Going down is negative slope. So this then CMQ will be uh, negative. Okay, it will be negative. Um, so these are the uh, typical examples. Like so, these are zero here, negative in here. You can see. It's negative, which is good news, which is good news. But in some other uh, aircraft designs, you can see that CMQ will becomes positive in here, meaning you are in trouble at some of those states. You inherently will lose this stability. That means crash, crash. So there is a way now you can check whether it's good or not crash or not. So it's pretty interesting, right? Well, uh, I think we should take a break. After that, we're going to go through trim analysis, OK? Uh, I uh, went through exactly the one third of my slides. So all right, take a rest. Yes. Yeah. Uh, what you call that? The FAA receives its uh, authority from Congress, right? Mm -hmm. And it receives its uh, authority right over like drones first, like, from 14 like Sierra Park, park something or something, right? Yes. Okay. And that's what gives them jurisdiction over the drones. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's the first part of the section of our so You always have to report every flight, and like every time you fly a drone, you have to report every flight, and every time you fly a drone, you have to report every flight. If you fly under 107, you should fire every flight. Oh, uh, every flight, okay. Uh, but then who would you report that to? Uh, there, there, there's a website. Oh. You just uh, do it yourself. Oh. Um, they don't police it, but um, if you were caught flying without proper paperwork, you will be in trouble. Okay. So, uh, you know the name of that website, or you know who? Actually, uh, if you was it the one you had your first one on the lab or no? Yeah, yeah, we well, yeah, Doctor Stark. I invited him to give a talk. He showed you everything on that. Yeah. Uh, so uh, if you if you go to the website, it's called US Safety.
I think the website is called um, UAS Safety. UAS Safety something? UAS Safety. And every time you fly, you just have to report there. <clears throat> yep. Yeah. There's a link you can can do that. Hey, what can I do for you? Yeah, I found the doors unlocked uh -huh. with these devices. Yeah, I did it. Because they cannot have a card access. But they do it. I now they have. Yeah, but, but this morning it was unlocked, so it was left unlocked all night. No, 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 no. I, I, I unlocked. Uh, I, I put this one when I, when I joined here. Because Bo Xiang, Bo Xiang uh, want to come to get, prepare that. I, I put this one on there. No, but I mean, I came at 7 in the morning. It was 7? Yeah, the, the, that dog has a device. That's not by our students, for sure. <coughs> yeah, I, I even found... Um, the other dog was Seven. Out. No, not me, not my students. I think it was like... And I saw the light is on. Yeah, but I came this morning, but I, I found... Something. This door also on the This one is... I did this one, too. It has this guy. Oh, hey, what are you doing here? <laughs> Try to remove yeah, this? Like, I had this one. Oh, that's, I did this one because uh, my students need to find me and they cannot. They lost but, all the. This is the one I found at seven. Uh, this morning. This should be not there. Yeah, it was there at seven. Oh, is it yeah. interesting? Yes, yeah, I'm not concerned about people getting in. Oh. Especially dogs like this one that goes uh -huh. to the fight. Uh -huh. So I found this one at seven. Okay. okay. So, but now they have access. So access? No. And I'm trying to get the key. The problem has not approved that office yet. When? I don't know, I'm asking. I'm meeting oh. them at, at 2 p.m. today. Okay. That's why. Remind one more time for me. No, I sent an email yesterday when uh, you sent me, and I, uh, I say, let's discuss it tomorrow in the meeting. We're discussing all this case. Oh, uh, you before I did the rent okay. for opening. Yeah. Okay. So, okay, good. Yeah, so uh, when are you going to prepare this room? Yeah, so I think This is uh, What's the timeline. For this room, we're trying to clean the room uh -huh. in a week. So uh -huh. we would have nothing here, and then um, Luisa is pending to send me the design, I'm going final, to find uh -huh. the uh -huh. final so design. We had a free so design so already, uh -huh. Uh -huh. but he said wait for me because he's still um, negotiating the equipment. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Is it dreadful? 
simple or is it just like is it doing? Well, in two minutes. Ridiculous. Robert is a family had this black cat called Diamond Boys. Called her the fat cat. She was the cat. She had like three litters. She just is fat and harasses everyone for attention. I know. Are you still recording right now? I know. Okay. <laughs> I forgot to turn it off. It off. No, 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 it's okay. We will keep it recording so everybody knows our real situation. You know. So, can you call people back? They know of your mercy.
Oh yes. Can you take the laptops? The yes. ones that have a laptop. They are preparing here. Thank you. Uh, I want to emphasize that uh, all computers are good. Uh -huh. Are good. So they are functioning. Nothing wrong. Hardware wise. It's all the stuff about deep freeze. Uh, Can you remove, unload that? Rebuild everything? And remove the deep freeze? Yeah, don't do a deep freeze. Okay. This is software problem. It's not okay. anything faulty. No, 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 nothing. I see. Everything is good. Uh, Hardware wise. I see. The blue screen is due to that. So it's. Okay. it's her man has some misunderstanding. Yeah, okay. yeah, we'll so everything is good. It's we'll new ask, computer. Yeah, we'll Just review everything and don't put deep freeze. Okay. Oh, this is a bad idea. Yeah, that, that thing is. <laughs> oh, sorry. So can we review everything? Is nothing wrong with the hardware? So we are going to take them to IT uh -huh. and we'll ask them. Ask them to remove or to review fresh. Yeah. Review fresh. But if they say it's going to take long, then probably for now. Yeah, let's try to find a way. Tell them it's not hard work. Unload it. Yeah, yeah. yeah just, you know, okay. okay. Try to fix as soon as you can. Thanks. Yeah. Okay, let's start. We need to start. We need to start. Are you guys ready? Thanks. Yeah, all this uh, power supply. Yeah. There's one missing. You, you, you last time they didn't give us. Yeah. All right. I need to close this door. So welcome back. In the next 90 minutes, we are going to uh, continue discussion. So I think at this point. It is very saturated, everybody. We saw a lot of equations. But the concept, please, I, I try to make it easier for you to digest. So I believe it is OK. Um, we can appreciate that. So, so the equation of motion, the equation of motion in the full scale, like 12 nonlinear differential equations, that's actually easy. However, how to gain insights into that complex set of equations? You see, it's a, uh, it's a technique that we need to learn. One of the basic things is called trim analysis. Trim, I'm not sure trim, what's, what's the meaning in your dictionary? Or what's the meaning of trim when you first see this word? Trim, like your hair. Trim, haircut, OK. Anything else uh, you can share with me? Trim? Taking out the edges, smoothing out. Smoothing out the new edges. Excellent. Uh, uh, let me ask one more here in red. Um, probably try to get rid of any like outliers. Excellent. I like that as well. Yes. So. Uh, if something not smooth enough, we just file it, okay? Um, remove it. So, in mathematics speaking, is we hope that the velocity, the change, is zero. So that's x dot is zero. When x dot is zero, I want to understand how that can happen. So basically. When this is 0, I try to solve x and delta. Usually, I uh, give in delta what is x. Okay? Because delta is what you give. You actively give to the aircraft. Delta is uh, the control variables, remember? Throttle, elevator, aileron, and rudder. Okay? So four of them. So this kind of mapping, so this equals 0. Then I can write x trim in terms of uh, delta trim. And uh, you rearrange, and you write that mapping g trim is a nonlinear relationship. So this mapping g is not always one to one. 
could be many to many. This is a good news or bad news? Not a bad news, okay? Could be good news. So then uh, there are many configurations that can reach this trim condition. Uh, which one is better? So, so if the internal dynamics are stable, meaning it's not going to blow out, this is called blow out. Do you see my point here? e to the power of 2x is going to blow out when t goes to infinity. It's called unstable. So it's called unstable. If it is negative, meaning it will damp out, okay? it's not going to smoke or explode. Okay? So, uh, so that stability means then flat conditions converge to the trim condition. So if somebody perturbed it, it will come back. Perturb it, it will come back. So that's called stable to the trim condition. So the trim condition is also called, more academically, called equilibrium point. Equilibrium, uh, equilibrium point. Yeah, equilibrium point. So equilibrium point, x dot is zero at the equilibrium point. Okay. So the idea sometimes this trim condition can be a good idea for doing regulator design. So you just inverse the trim, meaning, uh, uh, so meaning like this. So I said, given delta, I know what is the trim condition. But for controller design is, I want the system to fly in a trim condition like that. Now how I should maintain my controls services or throttles. So giving x, how to get this delta? Okay, that's a control problem. Then you regulate it. If it is away from trim, I come back to the trim. It's just like cruise control. Okay. So the idea is, you giving a desired state you want to move. Or we're going to see some examples later on, like longitudinal trim or lateral trim, or we'll see. So this car is called inverse trim idea. You set control inputs such that it will take to the desired state, desired state. But uh, uh, the going through the trim table uh, relationship, now I know what is my angles here, OK? With those control surfaces. Then I act those to my aircraft, I produce X. But it's not the same as this one, there's a difference. Then use this difference, then adjust this trim, and then control it. So then I can maintain my aircraft to that. So that's called a trim uh, regulator control, inverse trim based. This is a very uh, intuitive idea, right? So this is a closed loop control. But whether what kind of format of the controller uh, put it here, the easiest one is <coughs> proportional control, right? How many of you heard of PID control? Some of you never heard about it? Proportional integral and de derivative control. Okay, PID control. So the easiest way is uh, if I have found some difference in here, I proportionally produce some correction in here, add on top of previous trim inverse from the desired one, then add to the system again, and we'll have this. OK? This is a very, um, very uh, straightforward idea to achieve the desired state. OK? So here's one example, okay? Here is one example. So um, this is a simple wind tail system, wind and a tail, wing and a tail. So you have a, a, a system, and uh, you have a wing, and you have tail. So um, you have a lift produced. You have a uh, tail. If you move, you have force directly going down. So you can balance that balance that. So for this uh, moment balance point of view, okay, you can write down. Uh, so these are the distance you can measure. So you can write down this uh, balance of 
moment if you want to maintain the trim, okay? So then you need to maintain a certain level of angle of attack like this one, okay? But what is the right angle? So you can solve this trim condition. Everything trim means trim condition. So these are the surface, these are, don't worry about these coefficients. But use this trim condition, you can solve what is your lift, okay? It's your lift. So, uh, so that's called uh, longitudinal trim. So we look at from side, okay? From side. But if you look at uh, from, uh, uh, so this is the moment the balance. You can also see the force balance, uh, force balance. So you can lump everything in here. You have um, gravity, you have lift, uh, you have a velocity vector. And gamma is going to this like this one. D is drag. So this uh, T is thrust. Uh, v and alpha, they are the side slip and uh, um, angle of attack. Okay. So then use force relationship. You need to know your velocity should be maintained at a watt, okay? Maintained at a watt. So the trim elevator will be able uh, to define the trim velocity. So this depends, okay? And elevator and the thrust both can define the gamma. So the, the gamma is related to not only elevator trim, but also throttle trim. So this kind of relationship can be very quickly get it from the trim analysis. So it's very simplified. You don't see differential equations anymore. You only see what? Kinematics relationship, okay? So that's why trim analysis is a skill that can help you to quickly go there. So, so uh, there's something. Uh, <coughs> For well, longitudinal trim, you can answer the question by looking into these equations. So then, uh, how to get an aircraft to climb? Because you want to make the gamma greater than zero. Oh, sorry. The gamma greater than zero, you are climbing. So then, what you should do from the previous equation, you can see the first, you can two ways. Elevator up, okay? So you, you climb. This is very simple from the equation. Uh, so then elevator up, increase angle of attack, and also increase the lift. Increase lift, accelerate this, the aircraft up. OK. So then when you go up, you also increase your gamma. OK, gamma. Increase gamma, you, uh, you, you have rotate the lift backwards. Uh, you also slowing down the aircraft, okay? So that's one way. Another way to climb is to give thrust, okay? Because your angle initially is not zero, then you will keep going up. So that's climbing. So increase the thrust, increase velocity, and increase the overall lift, okay? It gets get you up. Increase the lift, accelerate the aircraft up, going up. Uh, up acceleration, increase the gamma again, increase gamma, rotates, lift backwards, slowing down the aircraft so, so to the original speed, okay? So you lose that speed. So this kind of uh, elevator has its limitations. So when lift to drag maximum is reached, it will start going down. That's called what? Stall. Stall. You keep going up, you see drop. Okay? So when the lift max is reached, uh, then uh, you will lose your climbing. And you are dropping even faster. The reason is your drag is also very big at that point. So, so these are quanti qualitative discussion based on the trim analysis for longitudinal motion. Okay? So, um, so theoretically, um, uh, relations hold to some degree of experimentally. In reality, we can see that. So propeller downwash on horizontal tail has a significant distorting effect. So especially for quarter water 
uh, based uh, UAVs, the propeller down washing should be uh, should not be ignored. Okay, should not be ignored. And uh, experimentally, you can build the trim table, called trim table, trim table. Okay, the, the trim fly the different sort of elevator positions. Then you record them and uh, that what is the uh, attitude, uh, what is the speed, uh, flat pass angle gamma, and uh, also the uh, the fugoid uh, damper would be very helpful. And uh, we're going to see some of these things. Um, so with trim table, if you experimentally build it. Experimentally build it, you can fly the aircraft without, almost without, a, a closed loop controls. So that's why a very experienced RC plane pilots, they can fly nicely because in their brain they have some sort of trim table already there. Okay, they know ideally what is that control surface variables. Okay. They can adjust accordingly. So, trim relationship is considered as very important. Okay, it will save you a lot of time. And if you do analysis around the trim condition, then the system actually behaves not that non-linear. <laughs> so, it's considered as. Um, <laughs> Considered as small motion around the equilibrium point. That's why we need to, we can apply linearization and a linear analysis of the system's dynamics. Okay. Well, next let's take a look of uh, uh, turning maneuver. Okay, turning maneuver. So we have aircraft doing here. We want to turn. So everybody learn the intuition that when you want to turn, you need to bank. The bank is important so that you can turn. But why? So we, mathematically, we can explain now, OK? So, uh, uh, so this is a simply a centripetal force balance, OK? Uh, so you have uh, lift, uh, sine phi, and uh, it's mv squared divided by r is like this. Uh, then you have the r is computed from here. So then obviously you must have sort of uh, radius, turning radius. Okay cannot be smaller than something, okay? The minimum one, it cannot be smaller than this, okay? Smaller than this, the turning radius. You cannot suddenly turn. That meaning you bank so much. So that depends on the phi max and uh, m divided by s and uh, l max. So, so the minimum turning radius is going down with respect to uh, this uh, angle. Uh, the raw angle, you, you roll it, so you have this raw angle degree. The raw angle is banking, okay? So the turning radius is going down. So you have to turn, this is a 10 degree of turning, okay? 10 degree of turning. So you have turning radius, it's much higher. You need. But if you have a small turning radius, you turn very fast, you have to bank further until like 70 degrees. But in here, in here, if you bank too much, your system has a limitation that you should not bank. The phi max is decided that you should not be higher than this bank angle. So uh, one of the reasons we, we, we do not want such a, a small terminal radius is because the wind loading problem. So you can see there's a wind loading uh, 
if you turn so quickly, the turning radius is so small, uh, during that turning, the force, centripetal force, will act on your wing. Sometimes they can tear, can break the wind. You understand? It's possible. So you, you got to experience. If you drive fast and turn sharply, you, you feel big force, right? Same thing is true for the wind. So there's a maximum loading force. You, if you, it's too big, then you break the wind. So constraints on the maximum turn. So elevator deflection to achieve high lift in the turn. Care about losing attitude. While you turn, you lose your lift. You, you will go down. Okay? When you bank, you go down. And maximum speed and thrust. Okay? And the minimum G loading. G loading meaning the how many equivalent of the gravity acting on the surface of the wing. You break the wing. A maximum lift and a stall and aeroelasticity of controls at the high loading. We very very fast bank. Now you have bending on the the bending on the wing. Okay? Force is too big, you tear it, you bend it, it really bends. Uh, so that's if it is too brick, you just break it, too, too uh, brittle, then break it. It has to be some elasticity, so. And then, because of that, you trigger the elasticity, then you add additional dynamics to the system. It's getting hard and hard to uh, control. Okay, so those are the constraints. The elevators to achieve the lift, elevators to achieve the lift, the pitching moments balance equation for dynamics form is like this. So before the turn, we have trimmed the aircraft in level flight. Okay, level flight is under the trim. Okay, uh, but uh, while you do the pitch rate is the projection of the turning. So therefore, you must bank. Okay. So maintain the same alpha. Extra elevator is required to counter the pitch rate. Okay, pitch rate. So the turning radius versus extra elevator deflection needed, okay? Okay. Okay. Uh, so make an aircraft turn, okay? There are a lot of factors to consider. It's not that easy, okay? And to understand this simple turning, okay, you need a trim analysis to help you to understand. So well, we have gone through quite a lot of uh, detailed uh, look of different uh, things here. So I want to emphasize that is there are many, many more such kind of simplified models for analysis. OK? OK? So in the traditional flight dynamic textbook, there are many more such simplified models. Okay. Okay. All right. Um, so last, uh, not least, is a more general framework to look at what we are more generalized than the trim analysis. So in the trim analysis, we assume that x dot is 0. But now, let's assume that we are all near the trim condition, but still not 100% trim. Then we just say, oh, around the trim, neighborhood of the trim, in the neighborhood of the trim, we have x prime, prime. So we write down the x dot. But remember, x is x trim plus x prime. But x trim is a constant, remember. x trim is a constant. So constant dot is 0. So that I didn't write x prime dot is OK. Because x prime dot is same as x dot, is it? Because this dot is 0. 
x stream dot is zero. That's so according to the definition. When it's stream, then dot is zero. So this is not a mistake in here. Not a, is this is the same as x prime. Okay. So we we talk about linearization. So we focus on this equation. Focus on this equation. Then we will be able to get two linearized partial f partial x. This is a matrix, 12 by 12, by the way. <laughs> 12 by 10. So this is 12 by 4. So this is 12 by 1. 12 by 1. This is 4 by 1. So this must be 12 by 4 matrix. Right? 12 by 4. So partial f partial delta. So these are able to come to to get by this what we call linearization effect okay and uh, it's very interesting that in our math lab I hope you can check in the simulink or my lab you, if I do this then uh, you know I'm in a my lab command line how many of you already learned and never seen this this is a my lab have you already seen this? Everybody? Yes. If you've never seen this MATLAB prompt in here, you're not supposed to be here. Have you seen this before? Yes. <laughs> OK, great. So don't worry. On Monday, we'll bring you up next Monday. Bo will do the extensive simulink with you guys. So inside here, you have the train. Uh, so let me give you motivation to spend time on the MATLAB Simulink. Uh, I have been using MATLAB Simulink since year 1987. 1987, so 30 years ago. So I used the DOS version, okay? Windows 1, 2, 3. Uh, so invest time in MATLAB Simulink is always worthwhile for your career building, okay? Because it's widely used in not only academy, uh, academic world, but also in industry as well. I worked in industry, I know the situation. So in MATLAB, there's a command to do the trim directly, okay? For a very complicated for very complicated uh, uh, simulator model. So trim can be done automatically. What they are going to give to you is to give you, uh, directly give you so these metrics. So this is actually the partial f partial x when x equals x trim. This is the same, it's a partial f partial u or delta when x is extreme. Okay? All right? So, using this linear, this is called linear time invariant system, LTV. Now, everything in your uh, Vibrating on the control, you learn mechatronics, everything you linked with A and B, you are able to do a lot of things starting from there. So then you can synthesize for linear regulator controls. Uh, this is a separate course, um, ME140, right? It's a linear control. There's a course on that. So that's the beginning. So when we linearize this one, then it's the starting point for the linear control. All the techniques there can be applied. Okay. But I said the neighborhood, meaning well, we consider the neighborhood of that region. Okay. And so the trigonometric tree and projections are nonlinear for dependence. So in practice, nonlinear dynamics. They have some very uh, uh, resemble great resemblance. We can gain a lot of insights by studying dynamics in the vicinity 
of the flight condition. So we understand in the equilibrium point how it behaves instead of the whole different conditions envelope. So we can separate into longitudinal and lateral dynamics. So if the, the, the conditions are symmetric, linearized models provide some information about trim relationship. Okay. So with that, we also very easy to understand the stability conditions. Um, then this part is a little bit linked to the control. Some of you never had a control. So um, um, let me try to get it. So s something called static stability. Uh, pitching moments increase when the angle uh, of attack. So you have a, uh, if you have alpha increase the delta alpha a little bit, you have uh, the more you have, uh, the more you go. So think about that. So uh, alpha increases, your lift also increases, right? But if your center of gravity is behind, uh, is behind, so then you, the bigger you go, the bigger the angle you have, then you just turn, right? Did you get it? So uh, I need to erase everything here. So think about where is your center of gravity, OK? So this geometrically very easy to understand. Say, for example, you have an aircraft moving, OK? It's moving, go this direction. But you have some angle alpha in here, so you have lift. You have lift. So, so this is called aerodynamic center, AC. AC, aerodynamic center. So the lumped force is acting on lifting like this, right? AC. Okay. So if your CG is here, your CG center of gravity is here. It's behind. That means. If I have a delta alpha plus delta alpha, delta alpha, then go up, then this will be bigger L. So this is bigger L. So it will make it turn, tumble like this, right? So this is unstable. This is going to be unstable. Because if I remove the delta L, it will cannot come back. It's, it's already doing this, right? But on the other hand, if your CG is in here, it's a different story, OK? Because you increased it, yes, you can do this. But when this delta alpha disappeared, it, the CG here will bring it back, then return back to the equilibrium point. So that's called um, the longitudinal static stability check about the relative position of CG versus AG, uh, AC, uh, aerodynamic center. Okay. So uh, is this clear? Okay. So. <laughs> so I cannot spend time on this too much. So let me uh, to tell you that uh, for longitudinal dynamics, after you have simplified it, they have uh, uh, longitudinal modes. You have short period. So this one is the complex plan, real part, a uh, real part, imaginary part. So the cross point is the pole of the characteristic polynomial uh, of the dynamic, linearized dynamic systems. If the poles far away from the imaginary axis, this will be damped away quickly. And this one close to the imaginary axis, this will be damped very slowly. Okay? So this is fast damping and slow damping. So this will have some sort of long 
Uh, so the people observe that. So how we can damp it? So it's very lightly damped, slowly, and balancing around pitch trim condition. So damping depends on the drag, low drag, low damping. Low drag, low damping. So in those low drag system, the price to pay is you d d d discover this type of uh, called uh, fugoid, fugoid motion. Okay, fugoid motion. So the idea for the fugoid damper design is to reduce the second order longitudinal system by uh, adding the damping. So, so something like this. So lateral directional model. Uh, you have three things called touch, touch row, the lateral, so meaning you go like waving like this, touch row. And uh, then you have row subsidence. You do the row, you also damp, naturally high damped, roll in the honey effect. Spiral is unstable, okay, spiral is unstable, okay. Anyway, and uh, so, Again, I want to remind you that flat dynamics is a very long, uh, very long semester course. And uh, again, it's a very thick book. We only covered the essential parts of it. Okay? So feel free to uh, read these books. So what I'm going to do next is spend some time on the reference frames. Okay, we'll go very quickly. Okay, then after that we watch a few uh, clips for this a set of five lectures, ten minutes each. And we see the first few, then you watch the rest. Will enhance your understanding of flight dynamics. Okay, so reference frame. So, so when you control aircraft, you need to use the right frames to discuss. Otherwise, it's going to be very complicated. So this is from uh, Randy Beers and Tim McLean's book. Okay, uh, very nice. So then, how to transform between different reference frames or coordinate systems? CS coordinate systems. So. If you want to describe the relative position and orientation of the objects, you need aircraft relative to the direction of the wind, camera relative to the aircraft, aircraft relative to the inertia frame. Most easily calculated, described in a certain frame. Like Newton's law is much easier. You do it in Earth's coordinate systems. Aircraft attitude, aerodynamics forces, accelerometer rate gyro is in the body frame. The GPS in the Earth's coordinate system. Mission requirements should be defined on the... So again, conclusion is, depending on what do you want to do, you should choose the right frames to discuss. So if everything is in 2D, so this is everything everybody knows, okay? So this is like, uh, they do IJK, is the unitary vector in three directions. 3D dimension. So these are the uh, p these are in this framework. So you have uh, <coughs> another frame, 3D in the 3D space. Uh, another frame, the unitary uh, vector is uh, I1, uh, J1, and K1. So th these are the uh, these are just uh, uh, the the positions. Okay, PX, PY, PZ. So there's two points in the so. It's a, uh, I1 is here, I1 is here, the I0 is here, okay, I0 is here, and J, so you do this coordinate, you do this uh, very easy uh, general coordinate system, you will do the rotation, find out in, you, in the same plan, you rotate, the rotation matrix, theta is defined like this. So next one is, uh, so this is right hand and rotating around the j-axis, i, j, k, i, j, k. So then you will see that from 0 to 1, rotating on the i-axis, you write in this form, theta. Okay? And the determinant of this metric is 1, and the inverse is transpose are the same. 
So back and forth is you know inverse. So if you rotate the vector, uh, rotate P and Q in here, you write something similar. Okay, something similar. Okay, I think we know this thing before. Uh, now let's go to. Let's assume I understand this rotation of vector in the space. Now it's time to talk about NED. NED, the Earth center downwards. So, so this is <coughs> IJK defined as this is frame F, this is frame of V. V is a vehicle, okay? Vehicle. Into the Earth center downwards. So this guy and this guy into the Earth center. And this is the east, this is the north. So this is not body, okay? This is not body, huh? So vehicle frame has same orientation as the inertia frame. So this is the I stands for inertia. So it's fit in this Earth coordinate system. So the inertia and the vehicle frame uh, <coughs> North, east, and down, X, Y, Z. Okay. And this Eulerian angle is heading, elevation, and bank, or your pitch roll. Okay, roll, roll. So this is very intuitive to see that, but it's mathematically, they may have some singularities. So vehicle frame, something like this, OK? Vehicle one frame. So north, uh, you have uh, going to the north. Phi is the heading, OK? Vehicle frame is like a body axis. That's body axis, OK? So, but, so this is the one way to do it, OK? So you put fix the north, fix this. This is symmetric to here, so you can do that. So, vehicle two is different. So it's like uh, uh, again, you have access to here. Then you define this is like V. So this is like parallel to the ground. So you have pitch angle theta defined like that. Okay. So the body frame is much easier, okay, it's much easier. So you do this J, this K, okay, it is theta, okay. Theta is the row, okay, the row angle, you bank. So together, inertia frame to body frame, you have uh, phi, theta, psi. Then you have this standard thing here. Sometimes we use something called stability frame. Stability frame. So in this one, we 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 have the velocity vector v is in here. We project this one. Okay, project this one, and this is the body axis. The body axis. So this is the horizontal frame. Uh, no, 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 no. It's also body and frame, the plane. So you project on that one, and they, so this goes to here and then come to here. So that is a stability fr frame for us to define an angle of attack. Angle of attack. This angle of attack is also linked to our aerodynamics computation. On the other hand, we have wind frame as well. So depending on, so you have wind frame. So you do relative to the wind. It is, so this W is the wind. So the stability and W is the same. You the same going downwards. So then you also have beta defined like that. And alpha defined like that. So.
So we can write alpha and beta. Using alpha and beta, you can turn from wind frame to body frame, OK, to, to do that. Then we, need, we have three different speed. One is called air speed, OK? This is uh, air speed. Another one is the wind speed. So the, the, from ground, you can see the speed is like that. So you, in the ground, you project the aircraft on the ground. The ground people will look at your vehicle actually flowing this way. But your actual velocity is like that. So VA is VG minus VW, OK? So these are the uh, components. Components. Okay. Uh, so airspeed, angle of attack, you can do this computation as well. Okay. Similarly. And the course of uh, flight path angle. This is for path planning. So you use the VG. VG is the ground speed uh, corresponding to this. You project this one here. So you have a vertical plane, horizontal component, ground speed, uh, cosine gamma, cosine gamma, OK? Gamma. And this is a psi is from inertial frame, OK, inertial frame. Though remember, NED is like that. I, I, I is inertial. So you have this. So that gamma is called path angle, OK? Gamma is called path angle, OK? and Psi is called course angle. It's off course, on course, right? When this guy is zero, they mean you exactly the following the following the case, uh, the the course, right? Uh, and you have wind triangle. We have seen this before, okay? But then you have uh, different angles corresponding to the wind, uh, defining as a side a course ang course angle, side slip angle, and there are some other. Uh, heading, heading angle is phi, it's a Eulerian angle. So all these angles are projected on the ground, you can see the difference. Okay. I never used a crab angle. <laughs> That's interesting. Crabbing is when it's panning side to side. Yeah, yeah, relatively, relatively. Yeah. It's not just like a coarse angle. So there are many. Um, so you can you can you can read that book, see the <laughs> coordinate systems. So I, I'm not going to go through too much. And it, then uh, we have uh, <coughs> more slides left for this part. Uh, so they're talking about vector differentiation and the vector vector and the force moment. Uh, Pressure distribution, we have seen this, aerodynamics, uh, control surfaces, okay? And uh, control surfaces, flying wing, V-tail, different things. Aircraft dynamics, these are longitudinal aerodynamics, aerodynamics approximation to the, these are the, uh, these are control derivatives, aerodynamics derivatives, okay? So with that, you can see all the force can be expressed by the original ones, a linear approximation, all this. And nonlinear terms, nonlinear terms. The reason I'm, I'm we have seen we have seen this one before, right? We have seen this one before. The drag versus angle angle of attack and it's drag. Now you have stall. So but linearly you can write it in terms of this. <coughs> Body frame, pitching moments, lateral dynamics, uh, aerodynamics. So, so our our role is to understand how those equations came out. And actually, I should do this. So there are step and by step derivations about how this is put in together in that Randy Beer's book. Again, it's a one semester. To understand everything here is a one semester course. Okay. 
So the key message today is to understand the trim condition So, so I understand that the full nonlinear model can be used for simulation. I said, okay, but uh, to gain insight for understanding, you need uh, simplifications and decoupling of those discussions you should understand. Uh, we covered last week here, but today we showed something called control derivatives, especially on that derivatives that can result in instability, okay? Instability. And trim analysis will spend a lot of time on it. And linearization, okay? So, you watch two clips, then we can finish today's lecture. of motion of the aircraft. It's the equations of motion. Just finish writing this up. So flight dynamics, it's the study of motion. More specifically, the study of motion of the aircraft. And then the second part, the control. That is how we control the aircraft. It's uh, how, how you steer the aircraft, uh, the control surfaces, and how that all works into the flight dynamics and how they affect the equations of motion. So there's a little bit about that. Um, next, we're going to move on to what, I guess we'll skip the, the different orders than I told you. Um, we're going to, what is, or excuse me, what will we be doing in the class? Well, first of all, we're going to derive the equations of motion. And as you'll find out, uh, actually we'll do EOM. That'll be the equations of motion for short. We will derive the equations of motion. Uh, these include the torques and the moments. Or, those are the same thing. Torques, moments, the forces on the aircraft, and then we will solve them. And as it actually turns out, it happens to be six differential equations. Six differential equations. I uh, screwed that one up. Six differential equations that we need to simultaneously solve. So we'll learn how to solve those as well. Um, secondly, we'll learn the relationship between the equations of motion and the aircraft design. And aircraft design. For example, the, how big the wings are, the control surfaces, where they're located, where the engine's located, how those affect how the airplane flies. It's too fast. Let oh, me just finish this up. Uh, it's too slow to me. Okay, and then thirdly, we'll learn the basic. We'll learn the basics on how to get predictable motion. How to get predictable motion by applying these, or by applying the equations of motion with the control surfaces. Okay, and then that's that part. Okay, next we have what is FEC used for? Well, I'll go over just a few examples of what it's used for. Um, first of all, it's used for aircraft design. It's also used for aircraft operations. I'll just go in more depth on that in a second. Those are like such as training, 
and uh, aircraft accident investigations. And then finally, aircraft automation. Okay, first we have the aircraft designs. Move that up. Uh, what I mean by that is how would they actually design the aircraft for? Like for like key things to keep in uh, mind is the stability. Not just the, the stability, but more specifically the low stability. Um, by law, aircraft are required to be able to take off on a, without without all their engines. So for a two aircraft uh, or two engine aircraft, they have to be able to take off with just a single aircraft, and they have to be able to account for it. Because if you think about it. If it's a two-wing aircraft and there's two engines on both sides and one of them blows out, you're going to have a huge moment for us trying to spin it around. So they have to actually have big enough control surfaces okay, on the back to, that? to counteract that moment for us. So, and for roll stability, for example, um, there's a couple things that affect the roll stability. There's one, it's the swept wings. So I'll just draw a quick example of what that looks like. Uh, let's see, I think this kind of looks like an airplane. So we have these swept wings back here. Swept wings. So that will go over to the later on, but that, just trust me for now, that increases That's the stability, fun. the roll stability, as in how likely it is to paint left or right. Uh, the second one is, as you might have guessed, or maybe guessed, uh, it's the, how the wings are uh, going up or down. If you look on most modern aircraft, or airliners at least, you notice that the tips of the wings are actually up. That kind of creates a steep, stable equilibrium, so it prevents it from uh, rolling. So that'll look like this. Got another airplane here. Over-exaggerated right there. I don't think this airplane would fly that well. Glider. This right here is called wing dihedral. Wing dihedral. That's not it's not that he dropped. And so this he, guy, he this might also be he's thinking of it goes the other way. Right here. So it looks like this right here. So it looks kind of better put in here. It goes like that. And it looks almost like a spider. That right there kind of creates an unstable equilibrium. And it kind of wants it to be tipping. You might be asking, why would you want to do that? Well, the answer is sometimes if your wings are swept back too much like this right over here, like this guy, you might create so much stability that it's almost impossible for it to turn, even when you're trying to intentionally turn it. So you might have to add some unstableness. Also for uh, military aircraft, where they have to be able to roll. An aircraft uh, passenger, or an airliner, you're not going to really want to be doing barrel rolls or turning really sharp. Okay, and then the third one that affects stability is a detail. And that looks like this. I'll try to draw a better aircraft. There's a detail up here. That looks a little better. It's this detail right there. That also creates uh, some stability. Okay, here is an example of what I'm talking about for stability and design issues. Here is a picture of the C-17. If you know anything about the C-17, it is a military transport. It means that you drive tanks up into the back or really heavy cargo. So as a result, you have to have really high wings in order to get the clearance required for this. Uh, I guess I forgot to mention it earlier, but in addition to a really high detail like you see on the C-17, a really high wings also create a high stability. So you have this really high stability caused from the up high wings and the seat down in the back, you can start to be able to have a hard time turning and doing maneuvers intentionally. So it's a really stable aircraft as it is. So in order to counter that, you see how they have the wings pointing downwards. That counteracts some of the some of the stability caused by those two other factors. That's just kind of a quick example of how the design and the attention of the aircraft kind of play a factor into how it's designed. You have to have a combination of these stabilities and unstabilities in order to have a usable aircraft and still complete the function that it was intended for. So that's just a quick example of how that plays out, how you design an aircraft based on its design purpose. Okay, moving on. Next we have aircraft operations. For example, I won't go into too many specifics of these. We have pilot training. Pilot training, for example, uh, it simulates flight. It directly applies these equations of motion we'll be doing. Yeah, yeah. I, I forgot to mention that part. Uh, in fact, uh, modern-day simulators are actually so accurate or so realistic that many times you can actually have in some of these newer aircrafts, your pilot might actually be a first-time flyer, first-time pilot of an actual real aircraft. Um, the catch about this is there's two pilots and one of them has to have uh, real-life experience, but you can have a co-pilot who's never flown an aircraft before. So that just gives you an idea of how uh, accurate we have gotten these equations of motion down in the first place. Or, yeah, equations of motion down. Another thing, another example, we have uh, accident investigation. Accident. So this complements what I explained about why this sky dynamics. Kind of heard it before. It's called the black box. Oh, you recover. This black box right here contains all the inputs that the pilot has made into the aircraft, all the conditions about the aircraft for a, a extended per a period of time, yeah. and common misconception. It's not actually black. It's bright orange. It's easier to find that. Orange. Way. Okay, and then thirdly, we have automation. These automations are come in the forms of uh, UAVs. Those are uninhabited aerial vehicles. 
Oh, it's also the autopilot on commercial airline planes. And then fly-by-wire as well. You probably know what the first two are, so I won't go into any detail about that, but fly-by-wire. Fly-by-wire. Fly-by-wire is a system, or olden days aircraft used to uh, be directly flown. This would be a one-to-one -one motion. The pilot would move his, uh, his wheel, and then the aircraft would do exactly. They're connected by physical wires. Nowadays, computers are, here's, I'll give you an example. Here's a, let's just say this is a wing right here, or tail, or some part of the airplane. We have this guy right here to control the elevation. And then we have a wire sticking out here. This wire goes to some box, let's say, that is mounted on some part of the aircraft. So this is the fly-by-wire system. This is controlled by this flight computer. The flight computer is also controlled to, let's say, the pilot control. I'll try to draw an accelerator pedal. Kind of looks like one. So when the pilot pushes this, it sends a signal to the flight computer, and then the flight computer will, in turn, move this. The flight computer also looks at what the pilot says, and it's, it's going to double-check to make sure, is what the pilot's telling the plane to do, is that actually able to happen? If not, it won't do that, even though the pilot says do that. It won't do that unless the, it knows the plane can't, because it knows exactly what the plane is limited to from the equations of motion and experimental data. Um, so that's fly-by-wire. That's just the, the system in place. There's also the other system where there is no flight computer. You can directly tell your plane what to do, and it will do that. Most newer planes run by this model right here. So that's just a little bit about what is FDC. Um, next, we're going to go over. Next, we're going to go over a little bit of vocabulary because, like a lot of different uh, fields of engineering, there's a lot of notation that you just need to know, and that makes it a lot easier if you know what it is. So uh, I think uh, he explained <laughs> a little bit more than what I have. Hey, Dad, come meet the new guy. Oh. The new guy. What new guy? <laughs> So, let me do this. So. Hello everyone, my name is Silas. Welcome to our fourth lesson in flight dynamics and control. Last time, we saw how to go ahead and derive some equations of motion for a uh, system of strings using some of the forces and some of the moments. So today we're going to go ahead and figure out how to, what to actually to do with these equations. So right now I just have an equation written down. It's a second order differential equation with a forcing function and cosine of t. So we'll just go ahead and go step by step on how to solve it. I'll already assume that you've done a little bit of differential equations before in your life. If not, I'd go ahead and review these, review how to do them. This is, the, this is a second order linear differential equation if you're wanting to look up how to do it. Otherwise, we'll just get started right now. So first thing we do is take the coefficients of these in front of the x terms. So we have a 1, negative 2, and a 2. So we'll just put those uh, coefficients in front of these uh, this the equation with lambda, so we'll have lambda squared. This will get the coefficient of 1. We'll have minus 2 lambda. That'll get the coefficient of a negative 2. And then we'll have a plus 2. Notice that these lambdas are going to decrease in power. We want to find lambda such that it equals that this equation equals 0. This is just a quadratic uh, equation, so we'll just go ahead and solve it. The easiest way to solve it is just a quadratic formula. It's always right. And in this case, it's the easiest. So the other, or I guess the other options is if you could factor it, you could go ahead and do that. Um, this isn't too easy to factor. I mean, you could do it by completing the square. That's another way, but quadratic formula will work in this case. So we'll have, you know that, oh, not x, lambda, equals negative this term, negative the middle term, negative b, negative, negative 2 will be positive 2. So I have a positive 2 plus or minus the square root of this middle b term squared. So that'll be 4. And we'll subtract 4 times this coefficient a times this coefficient c. So we have minus 4ac. So that's times 1 times 2. This whole thing is going to go over 2 times this first coefficient, 2 times a. So let's just go ahead and simplify what this is. We have two terms in the top over 2, so we'll just go ahead and split it up. So we have 2 over 2 is 1 for our first term. Our second term is the square root of 4 minus 8. That will be negative 2, the square root of, or negative, negative 2, negative 4. So the square root of negative 4 is 2 times i. So 2i over 2 is 1, or just i. Or we got 1i. So we have a plus or minus i. So that is what our lambda is. So uh, in differential equations, if you've done this type before, you know what to do. You just assume the answer is something in, with a, something in the form of some constant e to the something t power. Uh, we'll go ahead and do the same. So we'll just assume that the solution looks like this. So assume that it's equal to a, or at least this, uh, this part of the solution. It's not the part of the solution, not the particular part. So we'll just assume that this is equal to some constant we'll call a1, e to the this lambda times t. So it'll be 1 plus i times d, and then this next part will be b times e to the other term right there, because it has two roots, so it'll be 1 minus i times t. There we go, we have our solution right there. Now, this is not a very pretty form, because it has these imaginary numbers in there, so the next step, if you've done these before, and you realize when there's a negative root, there's a formula that we do, but we'll go ahead and just kind of walk through what to do when we get these i's. 
So, to start off, we'll just recall what Euler's formula is. So, we, his formula, it says that e to the something, we'll just call it theta, this term is equal to cosine of theta minus sine theta. That, no, 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 this is j, j sine theta. Okay, and then similarly, for the negative, we have e to the negative j theta equals cosine, that's plus, right there. Cosine theta minus j sine theta. This is so these two uh, identities right there, two Euler's formulas or whatever you want to call them, we can go ahead and plug them into this part right here. Because remember, we can always split up these e powers. So we can split it up into, we'll just substitute this t in, so that's e to the t times e to the i. Remember, we can split when it's a sum of this, or i t. When, we, when it's a sum, we can always split it up. So now we have e, e to the t times e to the i t. So we want to go ahead and minus. take these two terms right here. It's a minus, I add. <laughs> we want to take these two terms and put them into this form right here. So we will end up getting x is equal to a1 e to the t times cosine theta, which our theta in this, in this term will just be t, times, or uh, excuse me, plus j sine t. And then for the similar for the b term, for this next term, we have e e to the t times this, this guy, whatever this guy will be, in this case. I think you can watch it later. Some of you may feel boring about this. So let me show you something less boring. Then probably after another few minutes, I'll let you go. Um, so it's called uh, CTMS. So this is called control tutorial and MATLAB and similar. So you look at this one, they have introduction, they talk about modeling analysis and design, talking about PID, frequency state space digital, simulating modeling and control. So here also have uh, basics. So I want you to write down this uh, CTMS E N G I N and University of Michigan. So it's for CTMS, MATLAB, you will find it. So then you go to MATLAB, you will see a page. So this is a single page, you can see. So go through that and try your MATLAB skills. These are the surviving basics, okay? They're also surviving basics of Simulink, okay? So starting a block, starting it, so these are the surviving. If you never got experience on that, go and follow this step by step. Do it. Make up yourself quietly. So the Monday lecture and also the homework for the week four will not be a huge burden to you, okay? So, so you can see there are a lot of things. So these are the basics. Uh, then, let's talk about uh, systems. So, introduction, system modeling, system analysis. So, what is a system? So, you can see it's not very much. It's not very much. So, let me show you something like a uh, uh, mechanic system. So, you have a mechanic system, right? F, the red arrow is like your control, like your thrust of aircraft, right? So then the motion is the change, the dynamics of the change of X according to uh, mass spring time, or according to a differential equation here. The differential equation is, you write down the equation, you, you, you understand there's a, a spring, the force from the spring is proportional to Yeah. So the spring, and this is a damper, this is spring. So the damping force, spring dragging. So you, so you have this one. So then you can write down the differential equation. The, the summation of the force is mx double dot, Newton's second law, right? Remember, our flight dynamics is also based on Newton's second law. The difference is here, here is a one dimension, I see, one dimension. For the free body in the space, you need not just the x, you need x, y, z. 
and it's not only X, Y, Z, but also you need the angles, the pose, the, the, the attitude. Okay, so that's uh, phi, posi, posi, phi, posi, um, is theta. Okay. So then this is the second order system, x double dot in here. Then you write a vector form of x, x dot is a vector, is a state vector. Okay, it's a state vector. So you can keep doing this, then you can write in A, B, C, D format, A, X, B, U, and C, X. So then uh, you, you start to give these the quantities. So then in the MATLAB code, what do you write? Exactly give these variables. Write A is a matrix form, B is a vector, C is a vector, D is a vector. So the most important command is SS, standing uh, for state space to bring ABCD into space spa state space form of RTI object. Linear time invariant OBJ object. So remember in my lab everything is object oriented. So you build this one. So then you can you can you can show this sys is a variable. Okay, this sys is a variable. And I can cut paste this code. I can cut paste this code and put on the MATLAB. You will see the immediate result. Okay. So then you do. Oh, you can see the displays all this. You can see. Then uh, you did the Laplace transform. Then this is, is. You can also enter the Laplace transform through TF. Okay. TF. This is transfer function. Okay. Okay, you also can do numerator denominator part like that, like this numerator denominator using this TF. Okay. okay. So these are the how to enter, let the computer know that you have a dynamic system. So your RLC is similar, you can see. So all this can be, you know, this simple, right? It's very simple. Very simple. So read those things will help you to understand flight dynamics. Okay. So the plan for next week will be plan for next week will be um, the first week uh, no sorry the, the Monday lecture will be on uh, simulating flight simulation flight simulator using the MATLAB simulator. Okay. The Wednesday one will be on communication module basics and the long distance drones. Okay? And uh, so any questions at this point? Uh, we 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 were sorry about our laptop or we always get problems okay? uh, being fixed. So if we cannot, we'll bring it on campus for the Linux lab. I know last lab didn't do very well. So we extend the deadline. Uh, we hope to do better tomorrow. And uh, we're also trying to fix all the laptops. And uh, anything else? Um, for the RC test, RC test. So before you fly the real drone, I hope you have enough training on the flight simulator. You better do pass. Uh, uh, Motels give you some uh, time to fly some pattern. If you pass, we'll give you a certificate. How about that? And, uh, I think we can stop here. Any other questions? Well, remember, I'll, I'll send you the link to the CDMS and I'll send you the link to that uh, flat dynamics explanation. I think he's doing a good job. Okay. Very, very basic. Okay.
Okay, let's recording. 